Arcanites is a tower defense style gacha game that requires an exorbitant amount of brain power and patience to play. If you're not familiar with the tower defense genre, the main objective for these type of games is to protect your home base by setting up a defensive perimeter to ward off waves of enemies. In Arcanites, you have access to a wide selection of operators that can be formed into a squadron which you can deploy on field operations. When starting an operation, you'll notice a few things on the UI. First is the enemy counter, which displays the number of bad guys you'll be expected to defeat to complete the mission. Second is the amount of health points that your home base has. If too many enemies reach your base and the health points reach zero, it's game over. Thirdly, there's a gameplay speed and pause functions, which you can use freely to help contemplate your strategy or life choices in general. Then lastly, there's the deployment point counter, which functions as a cooldown timer for how quickly you can start deploying operators since each operator has a deployment cost. There is a limit to how many operators you can deploy on the field, so you'll have to swap out and retreat operators to get the right team defense setup going on the map. There are currently a total of 8 classes in Arcanites with each class having a specific role they specialize in. Vanguards are usually the frontline operators that can be deployed first since their main function is to quickly generate deployment points in order to get your field team set up on the battlefield as soon as possible. Their deployment costs tend to be on the low side and it's often recommended to bring at least one or two vanguards for most operations. Most vanguards boast average stats and are moderately capable fighters that can hold down the line until you have enough deployment points to deploy more combat oriented operators to hold down the fort. Defenders are the tanks of this game and their main function is to stall enemies. Most defenders in general sport high defense and can block multiple enemies, but they tend to be held back by low attack stats and offensive capabilities. Pair them up with a good healer and they'll become a near unbreakable wall holding back the tide of enemies. Guards are the main melee fighters of this game and are more geared for combat compared to vanguards and defenders. They usually have high attack power and a large health pool with a respectable amount of physical defense. Guards can usually go toe to toe with stronger enemies or even bosses. So, if you need a good DPS melee operator, guards can get the job done. Medics are the healers of this game, and their main job is to provide support by keeping your operators alive and healing their wounds. Most medics do not have combat capabilities and cannot attack enemies, so it's best to deploy them from harm's reach behind your combat operators for the best results. Snipers are ranged operators that primarily specialize in taking down airborne enemies such as drones or to mow down mob enemies with low physical defenses. They boast the longest range out of all the classes and provide excellent fire support from a safe distance away from the enemies. Casters specialize in magic which in this game is called arts and they function similarly to snipers. They are ideal for taking down enemies with high defense that snipers normally don't fare well against. So if you need to take down those big beefy enemy units with low magical resistance, casters are your go-to operators for the job. Supporters are the buff bots of the group. Depending on the operator, some supporters can boost the attack, defense, and HP of fellow operators on the field, while there are others that can debuff the enemies by lowering their defenses or movement speed. There are also supporters that can summon unique allies that can help them fight off or stall the enemies, usually at the cost of a deployment slot. The specialist class is kind of a jack of all trades sort of group. Specialists can excel at immobilizing enemies through various methods such as setting traps, stun locking, assassination, and pushing or pulling enemies like ragdolls. This class is definitely the most complex one out of all the other groups and requires a fair amount of brain power to use properly. The story for Argonites is set in the sci-fi fantasy world of Terra. 
This world is largely inhabited by humanoid beings consisting of many different races. Most people are hybrids that resemble normal looking humans that bear some animal characteristics, mostly identifiable by their ears, horns, or tails. You can find cat and dog folks, lizard people, even angelic or demonic looking beings, and many many more. The world of Terra is plagued by conflict and natural disasters that have ravaged most of the planet. Many people are infected by a cancerous disease called Oripophy, which causes rock-like cysts to grow on the body, slowly expanding and killing the host over time. There is no definite cure for Oripophy, as it can only be treated to further reduce the growth on one's body. People infected with Oripophy are often persecuted and feared by the public masses who haven't yet contracted the disease, which often leads to misunderstandings and conflict. The stigma against the infected has forced some to band together, creating splinter factions that often get involved in violent conflicts. You play the role of a mysterious person that goes by the name of the Doctor, who has awakened from deep sleep and can't seem to remember their own past. The Doctor is rescued by an independent faction known as Rhode Island, which is a small militaristic pharmaceutical company that offers treatment to those infected worldwide. The Doctor ends up being a prominent leader at Rhode Island and will play a vital role that could possibly have a huge impact on the future of the infected. If I had to give a rating to the story of Arknights, I'd personally give the world building and lore a 9 out of 10. I honestly find the world of Terra interesting and it's fun learning how this fantasy world functions in regards to its civilization and its people. What's not so fun, however, is the storytelling and its execution, which I'd rate a 5 out of 10. The writing is on the weaker side since a lot of time you'll notice characters repeat their thoughts and viewpoints multiple times in a single conversation. The amount of times where a character tries so hard in sounding philosophical and telling me how cruel the world is or how bad people can be is almost comical. It feels like the writers are just trying to reach a quota on how many words they can cram into a single chapter. It probably wouldn't be as bad if the story was actually voice acted, but sadly it's non-existent in this game. Oh well. Alright, so it's time to address the elephant in the room. Ark Knights is a gacha game, and if you don't know what a gacha game is, it's essentially a loot box system that requires you to spend in-game resources and sometimes even real money to obtain the desired characters that you want to play with. It's basically gambling except you don't earn any money back if you win, but instead you get your coveted waifu and husbando PNGs. The gacha aspect and way of recruiting characters in this game is relatively generous and it's not as predatory compared to other more stingier gachas. Then again, that's not saying much when it comes to this style of game monetization, like what else can you expect really? <laughs> There are multiple methods in obtaining characters. The two main methods of summoning operators are recruitment and headhunt. Headhunt contains the standard banner, which is your traditional gacha style banner where you can do single rolls or a 10 roll depending on the number summoning currency you have. The summoning currency is this red stuff called arundum. Arundums can be obtained by doing tasks which come in the form of dailies and weeklies. These mission tasks can be completed by simply playing the game on a regular basis. There is also a game mode called Annihilation which can be farmed for arendums on a weekly basis. Standard and limited banners only accept arendums and special gold tickets, so choose wisely on who you summon for. The second method to obtain operators is called Recruitment, and it's basically the free to play way of obtaining operators. The recruitment pool is rather large and contains a wide selection of ops ranging from 1 star to even 6 star ops. You can recruit almost any operator with the exception of certain limited time ops. Recruitment uses tags that act as a filter to narrow down which class and operator you need. This is the best method to build your roster as a free to play player since recruitment permits can be obtained from daily mission tasks and other sources. 
Arknights originally launched in China during May 2019, with the global server eventually launching later in January 2020. In terms of banners and events, the global server is roughly 6 to 5 months behind. The large time gap provides clairvoyance for players that want to save for a particular operator that has already launched in the OG Chinese server. For new players that suffer from FOMO, worry not as operators get consistently put on rerun banners. There's also an event archive feature that lets you play through past limited time events with some containing free welfare operators that can join your roster. So if you're wondering if it's ever too late to start Arknights, let me just say that it's better to start later than never. Arknights is currently going strong and the community continues to grow which means there is an abundance of guides and research material readily available for new players. I do believe Arknights will continue to go strong for a couple more years as the company behind it, Hypergriff, is investing more resources into this franchise such as adding multiple language dubs along with other nice quality of life improvements. There's also an ongoing anime adaptation accompanied by multiple manga serializations that further flesh out the story of the franchise. The music in this game is also top tier and it's often memed that Hypergriff is more of a music company rather than a gaming one due to how good the soundtracks are. As a day one player that's been playing Arknights since global launch, it's kinda crazy seeing this game rise up from a non-existent IP to what it is today. It's nice seeing a gaming company invest this much time and resources into a franchise they've created from scratch. Arknights does have its ups and downs, but in the end it's still a great strategy game that I still enjoy playing till this day. So, if you're looking for a game that will give you brain damage in a good way, then it's time to forge yourself a fake PhD and become an unlicensed doctor committing war crimes. So tread lightly and take this old hag of a cat and adorable donkey with you. Bye bye.